Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another training video. So we have a diagram on the board for you guys. This is a very basic cooling circuit. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through how I learn how to read diagrams using a diagram just like this. All right. It's going to be a very basic diagram. If you guys know how to read diagrams, you're more than welcome to watch. If you don't, this is the video for you. We're going to take you through it step by step. And we'll probably get into a bit of a series with this specific diagram on some troubleshooting techniques, so on and so forth. So let's get into this right now. So before we get into this one, guys, I wanted to let you know about the HVAC Know It All app that just launched about six weeks ago. There are 3,000 downloads. The app is incredible as far as question asking, learning, open-mindedness, and staying away from the trolls off of social media. Now, there is a small fee, yearly fee for this. There's $10 US and about $13 Canadian for the entire year but you move on to a platform that is geared towards learning, teaching, and understanding each other with an open mind. So check it out if you have some free time. Okay, so the diagram. We have a high side. When I say high side, this is our high voltage side. This is our low voltage side. It is separated by a transformer. Now I've written the voltage at the top and the bottom of the transformer. The primary voltage of the transformer is 208. So we can presume that this circuit here is a 208 circuit, all right? And then the low side at the bottom is going to be our secondary voltage or our control circuit. So that is 24 volts and that is this circuit right here. So the other thing we've done for you here is put in a legend. Legend is very important. If you don't have that, sometimes you might not know what some of these things mean. For instance, C is for compressor, okay? And then the compressor is right here, it is labeled C. If we move down to IFR, indoor fan relay, okay? So we can see that in a couple of different places. We can see that here, and we can also see that here. So anytime you come across something, you're not understanding what it is, you go down to the legend and you have a look. Now, what I would recommend that you do is if you come across something like high pressure switch, you don't know what a high pressure switch is. At that point is when you stop, you pull out your phone, because we've all got our phones in our pockets, right? And we Google, what is a high pressure switch in an air conditioning unit or refrigeration unit? And you read a little bit about it. And then once you read a little bit about it and you understand what it is, HPS, high pressure switch, HPS is right here, you'll have a better understanding of how the system is working in conjunction with everything else. So this is one of the things I did when I was learning diagrams is when I got to something on the legend, I did not understand. I would try to dig into it a little bit further. Now, back in the day when I was learning, I didn't have a cell phone in my pocket that I could Google things because we're going back 20 years ago or more. So what I had to do is rely on my boss or my service manager or other technicians I was working with. And that's how I tried to retrieve the information. You guys are spoiled today. There's a lot of stuff online that's out there that is at your fingertips. So I suggest you use it while you're learning this trade. Okay, so I have written line one and line two up here on the diagram. And basically what that is, is that we have, we have power coming in on both sides. Now on a 120 volt circuit, you will see line one and you'll see common. Okay, so you'll have like a 120 volt supply here and on this side, it'll be common. On this diagram, it's not. We have power coming in here and we have power coming in here. Now this is a 208 slash 230 volt circuit. So if we were to take our meter leads and check here and check here, we would probably have around anywhere between 105 to about 120 on each side right here, okay? Now on the low voltage side, we have 24 volts. This transformer is called a step down transformer. So we're going to take a higher voltage and we're going to step it down to a lower voltage so we can control everything that's going on in this diagram from this circuit right here. Okay. And this here is your thermostat. I didn't label it because it would be too small and uh, you wouldn't be able to read it probably in the video. So I'm going to tell you this is your thermostat. So we have the high side, we have the low side, we have our transformer, we have our thermostat, our legend, but just keep in mind that we have line one and line two. It's not line one and common, okay? On this lower side of the, of the, of the system here, 
24 volts, we do have a common here. So we're gonna leave 24 volts out of here. And on this side, we are going to have a common right here, okay? So let's get into this a little bit further and I'll show you guys how I learned to read diagrams using this finger right here. All right, so the way I learned how to read diagrams is I'd start with my finger, okay? And I'd put it on the place that was the beginning of what I wanted to find out what happened. Now, you always want to start on the low voltage side because all of this here controls what's happening here. These are the relays down here that you want to energize to start these loads up. Okay, we have a compressor, a fan, and an indoor fan. Compressor, outdoor fan, indoor fan. And when I say loads, a motor is a load, okay? A contactor coil is a load. This is a switch. That's a switch. Okay, these are normally open contacts. All right, if I was to draw a line through it, it means it's normally closed. That means that there is continuity flowing through there. If I have an open one like this, that means we don't have any continuity flowing until we make a change down here. Okay, these are also switches, high pressure and low pressure switches. So in a circuit like this, we have switches and loads. Loads are receiving the power, all right, and they start to run. Okay, basic, just basic stuff here. And switches are what close in order to relay the power through from one side to the other. So when I learn diagrams, what I would do, for instance, is let's say I wanted to know how the indoor fan started up. Well, I knew from my basic training that we need to get power from the low voltage side. We need to energize a relay to close a contact to start the fan. So what I would do is I'd put my finger right here. All right, because this is power. This is where it all starts. I'd run my finger along. Boom. I come to R. What is R? Well, I'd figure out what R is. R is the power designation on a low voltage circuit. So you're always going to have 24 volts here on a normally working system. Okay, normally working system. Because this is the thermostat, and I know that if somebody goes up to that thermostat and commands the fan to on, I know there's going to be a relay in that thermostat. We can't see that relay because it's embedded into that thermostat. We are going to provide power from R to G. Right? We can't see it happening because it's in the thermostat. But we are going to go with our finger to R, turn the thermostat fan on, we are going to jump power from R to G. So now we have power on G. So now what I do is I take my finger across here. Get to IFR. What's IFR? Well, I'd go to the legend. IFR is indoor fan relay. All right. Now this here is a relay. I hope you guys can see that. Okay. So on this relay, we have a low voltage side down here is our coil. This is where our 24 volts goes in. So, G coming into the coil would be this terminal right here, all right? And then coming out of the coil to the common side of our transformer, it would be this terminal right here, all right? So I know that's IFR, I know it's the indoor fan relay. This energizes. When it energizes, what happens? Well, up here, take our finger again, the normally closed contacts that this controls will now close because this has received power. When this contact closes and this contact closes, what we've done is we've created a path for current to flow to the indoor fan, IF, indoor fan. All right, so that's how I learned to read diagrams, guys. I just put my finger on it. And I came across the legend, read what it was. If I didn't know what it was, I would ask some people later on, take my finger, once it's energized, came over here, closed, closed. We power this up. Now, back to this relay again. Because we're coming in from two sides, so what happens here is that this one here coming in right here, 
is coming in to this terminal right here on this relay. All right. Leaving is this terminal. On this side, we come in to this top terminal and then we leave right here on this bottom terminal. So what happens is we energize here. All right. These are open beforehand. As soon as we energize here, the path across these two close, just like our line across here closes and we start this motor up. Now, this is a capacitor. I've actually forgot to draw in C3 because we have C1, C2, C3, and we have C123 down here, capacitor. But for argument's sake, this is capacitor number three. I drew it in for you guys. Nobody's perfect. My bad. I made a mistake. I forgot to draw that in there. But th there's a C3. And if you guys haven't seen a capacitor and you're just learning, this is what a capacitor looks like. Okay. Here's the start winding right here from the motor. That'll go into one side of the capacitor. And then we'll have our run winding and power. And that will come into this side of the capacitor right there. All right. So now that we have the fan running, which is probably the most important part before we bring on the cooling, because we cannot run the cooling without the fan. And the way we did that, we just followed our finger to our thermostat on, okay? The fan on, we jumped power from R to G. G brought power across to the indoor fan relay, closed these two contacts, started the fan. All right, so now we wanna bring on the cooling. So let's go through that. Okay, so we have a space that is, let's say 75 degrees. We wanna cool it to 72 degrees. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come across to the thermostat, we're gonna set it to cool. We're gonna turn it down to 72. Because it's 75 in the space, our cooling will kick on. But how do we know it's doing that by reading the diagram? Or how do we follow that through the diagram? Well, again, we take our finger, we start at the beginning. 24 volts to the thermostat. Our fan is on, so we have 24 volts jumped to here. All right, now our cooling is calling. So now we also have 24 volts jump to Y, all right? R is power, G is fan, Y is cooling, C is common. So now we have jumped from G to R, and now we're jumping from R to Y. So we're gonna come across with our finger again, high pressure switch. What is a high pressure switch? Well, there it is right there. Look it up if you don't know. We're gonna come across to LPS. What's LPS? Well, it's a low pressure switch. All right. If you don't know, look it up. And then we're going to come across to the compressor contactor coil. Now, let me just explain something to you. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but a high pressure switch is usually drawn. Okay. This, this little symbol down here means a pressure activated switch. When you see this little symbol, now it's usually drawn high pressure goes sort of up like that because it's supposed to rise up like that to open. All right, when it rises up like that, it opens if there's a high pressure switch situation or a high pressure situation in the system. Now, this one is drawn down because it's supposed to drop down like this and break the circuit if the low pressure switch opens or there's a low pressure switch situation in the circuit. So this one is drawn like that on purpose because it rises, this one falls, and this symbol here is to indicate that it's a pressure activated switch. Come across with our finger to CC. What is CC? Compressor contactor. Where is CC up here? Well, CC and CC. So just like the fan, the indoor fan, we're going to energize and we're going to close these contacts. All right. This energizes and closes these two contacts, starts our compressor up. Okay. Now I have a a contactor for you. Unfortunately, it's only a single pole. This would be a two pole situation because we have two contacts here. I've got a single pole contactor, but what I wanted to show you here was the fact that where the coil is, where the coil lives. So down here, this terminal and that terminal right there. So we come in to the, the contactor coil. That would be that terminal. And then we're going to come out on this terminal back to common. Okay, now up here, that's one leg, all right? From here out is one leg. 
Now let's say for a second, this is a, a one pole contactor. The other side is called what's called a shunt. It actually has power flowing through it all the time. But let's say we duplicated this and we had this open close contact on this side as well. Well, that contact flowing through here would be this side, would be that side, okay? Now, unfortunately, I only had this one, and I apologize for that, but I think you can get the gist of it. Basically, we're just doubling on this side. This is one side, that's the other side, here and here, all right? So, close, close, we're gonna power the compressor, all right? But we have something else here, so we're gonna follow with our fingers down. CF, what's CF? CF is a condenser fan. Now, because when these close, the compressor starts, we also want the condenser fan running on the condensing unit to reject the heat away from the, the condenser, reject the heat from the system to the ambient air. So we are going to bring on the condenser fan as well. Now, each one of these also has a capacitor. All right. A lot of situations, it'll be a dual capacitor. So this will be one big capacitor, but sometimes they'll be separate. So that's why I've drawn them separate here. So basically, guys, that is how I learned how to read diagrams. I just took my finger from the beginning, started, and when I wanted to know how something worked, I'd figure it out down here first, go to the legend, and then come back up here with my finger again, go to the legend until it all started to click. And then one day, I just looked at a diagram, and it was like, it was like the matrix, just things started to happen, right? But you got to do this over and over again and over again until you really understand how these work. Now, this is a very simplistic, basic ladder diagram. You're gonna see a little bit more um, in-depth diagrams in the field, but this should help your, your mind sort of wrap around the concept of reading wiring diagrams. But that's it, guys. Next one, we're gonna do some troubleshooting kind of with the same sort of setup right here, but until then, happy HVACing.